Good evening. This is the first Sky at Night special for a long time. The reason is that we have a new comet, Hayak Kutaki, which may well become the brightest for many decades. In fact, really brilliant comets have been rare in our own century. The last, I suppose, was the Great Daylight Comet of 1910. There have been naked eye comets since. In 1957, we had Comet Adam Roland. I remember that very well. That was the subject of our very first Sky at Night program. In the 1970, we had Bennett's Comet. In 1976, West's Comet. But although they were interesting, none of those could possibly rival the great comets of the past, such as the Comet of 1843, which apparently cast shadows. The trouble is that apart from Halley's Comet, which of course came back in 1986 and it comes back every 76 years, apart from Halley's Comet, which wasn't bright last time round, all these really brilliant comets take so long to go around the sun, many centuries, that we can't possibly predict them, and they always tend to take us by surprise. And for that reason, they're often discovered by amateurs who know the sky very well indeed. And that was the case <coughs> with this new comet, discovered in January by the Japanese amateur Yuji Hayakitaki using a pair of 25 by 150 binoculars. In fact, it wasn't his first comet discovery. He discovered an earlier comet in almost the same position in the sky. But clearly, as soon as he found this one, he realized it was a long way away and was going to be something very special indeed, as indeed it's turned out to be. At this stage, I'm delighted to welcome back uh, Dr. John Mason. Welcome back, John. Well, uh, I wonder, how close is Comet Hayakitaki going to come to the Earth? Well, on the 25th of March, at closest, Comet Hayakutake will pass just 15 million kilometres above the Earth. Now, that sounds a long way, but it's quite a near miss on the cosmic scale. There have been other close cometary encounters. In 1770, we had Lexel's Comet. That came within just 2.2 million kilometres of us. And more recently, in 1983, May, we had Iras Araki Alcock, and that passed within 4.6 million kilometres of the Earth. And both of those comets were naked eye objects. And now we have Comet Hayakutake. I think it's important to stress that there's not the slightest chance of going to hit us. This will be a long no, way no. away. But is there anything unusual about the orbit of this one? Well, since discovery, Comet Hayakutake has been heading in towards perihelion, its closest approach to the Sun. You can see here it passing above the Earth on March the 25th, on its way in towards perihelion. And when it is closest to the Sun, on May the 1st, it'll be just 34 million kilometres from the Sun, and that's inside the orbit of the planet Mercury. Yes, indeed. Now, there are two things that make Comet Hayakutake rather special. No comet has passed so close to the Earth and then gone on to pass so close to the Sun. And Comet Hayakutake is also, intrinsically, the brightest comet to have passed so close to the Earth for several hundred years. Now, the orbit of Comet Hayakutake, we now know, is an ellipse. It's not a parabola, it's an ellipse, a very large ellipse. The eccentricity is just less than one. And if we compare the orbit of Comet Hayakutake with that of Halley's Comet, we can see it's very, very large indeed. And when furthest from the Sun, Comet Hayakutake is more than 100 times more remote than Halley's Comet its furthest, and the period of Comet Hayakutake is some 15 to 16,000 years, so it's almost certainly been round several times before. Well, of course, this is make, uh, makes it particularly interesting. Comets are unreliable things. I just wonder, how easily can we predict how bright Hayakutake is going to be? Well, since discovery, we've been observing Comet Hayakutake and estimating its brightness. And you can see here, with the line of dots, that the comet has been steadily brightening since discovery. And based on its past performance, we can predict how bright Comet Hayakutake might be in the future, as shown by the red line. Now, there are two peaks there in the light curve. The first, on March the 25th, when it's closest to the Earth. Then it fades a little, and then it brightens again as it comes in towards perihelion at the second peak. Now, how Bright's comet become depends very much on whether they're first-time visitors to the Sun or whether they've been round several times before. And a good example of this sort of thing was Austin's comet of 1990, seen there. Now, Austin's comet brightened nicely, and just when we expected it to brighten some more, it faded. Yes. This was one of those first-time visitors to the Sun. But Comet Hayakutake, because it has a period of some 15,000 years, has been round before, and therefore we can be, be more confident about its brightness in the future. Now, there's one example of how bright it might be, a brightness of plus 0.5 when closest to the Earth, and minus 1 when closest to the Sun. 
And here's a more optimistic prediction of its brightness. Magnitude minus one when closest to the Earth, and maybe minus four when closest to the Sun. But a word of caution here. Those brightnesses refer to the total brightness of the comet. And when the comet is closest to the Earth, its light will be smeared out over a large area, and a first magnitude comet under those conditions won't be as bright as a first magnitude star. It will be large and diffuse, uh, and it will not be anything like stellar in appearance. And of course, we do need a clear dark sky, and unfortunately, the weather recently has not been good. No, I've only had one decent view of the comet so far. But uh, most important thing of all, where do people look for it? Well, over the past few weeks, the comet has been moving steadily northwards. A couple of nights ago, it passed fairly near the bright orange star Arcturus in Bootes the Herdsman, and it is still moving northwards. It's mo it won't streak across the sky, but its motion is detectable from one night to the next. You can see here where it was last night. Now tonight, if you go out after the programme, the comet will be near the end star of the tail of the Great Bear, and it will be large and diffuse, uh, and rather like this. Um, it'll be best seen in binoculars or with the naked eye. You don't need a telescope to see it at its best, because it is so large. Uh, the comet will then go on moving towards the pole. The following night, it'll be close to the guardians of the pole, and then on Tuesday night, it'll be very close to the pole star. And for the last few days of March, it'll be moving down into the northwestern sky, passing the familiar pattern of Cassiopeia. Of course, at the end of March and early April, the moon is going to start to become obtrusive. Yes, the moon's a problem really the last two or three days of March, right through until the total eclipse of the moon, which rather conveniently happens on the 3rd, 4th of April. And for the 1 hour 27 minutes that the Moon is totally eclipsed on the 3rd, 4th of April, you will be able to get a nice view of the comet over in the northwestern sky, down among the stars of Perseus. And at that time, the comet will be rather more condensed because it'll be further from us, but the tail should be rather obvious, as you can see here. Now, following the eclipse, the comet will be observable for about three weeks in a fairly moonless sky, and it'll move down towards the northwestern horizon during the uh, month of April. And by the middle of April, uh, it should be a beautiful object hanging in the evening twilight sky about an hour, an hour and a half after sunset. And I have a hunch that in the third week of April, it really could be a splendid sight with a magnificent tail. And I just wonder, it might even rival Comet West that was visible almost exactly 20 years ago in March 1976. Well, and my view is it's probably going to exceed Comet West. And it I could have be great, right. I have great hope for Hakutake. We've had many cometary disappointments in the past, but this time I think we really are in for some really, something really spectacular. And of course also a tremendous opportunity for astrophotographers. Indeed. The comet, of course, is already a naked eye object. It's been seen uh, the past week or so, although the clouds have been there. And it is going to be large and diffuse, but it will become more condensed as it's moving towards the sun with a nice tail. And that will be when the best views will be had, I would think. All we need now are clear skies. John, thank you very much. Don't forget, if you want the latest astronomical information, then call up our Sky at Night information line 0891 800330 or CFAX, page 615. And when I come back for the next regular Sky at Night program, which is next Sunday, I'll be joined by Professor Michael Bode, and we'll be going well beyond the solar system and talking about old Novi. So until then, good night.